So let's start adding some more, right? So we've got this kind of level and this sort of rigid structure in this gameplay. Let's make it look better. Let's like give it some level of coolness. Let's, let's give it some, some ambiance, some environment, make it look good. We're going to add some lights. Now lights, uh, a lot of people think, well, you know, sprites and 2D stuff, they're not generally lit, and so how do we use lights? Are we going to use some special 2D lighting or some, something like that? And the answer is no. We're actually going to make this work with 3D lighting. It's nothing really special. It's exactly how 3D lights work anyway. Uh, a little secret for maybe those of you who don't know, there's no such thing as a 2D game. I know it's mind-blowing. A 2D game is just a 3D game where you just don't happen to use the z-axis. So there's no difference in lighting 2D and 3D. Now, I do want to point out that, that Unity has announced, and, and they're working on, and you'll see later, a, a, like a 2D lighting st stuff, but that's a different kind of lighting specifically built for 2D. This is not that. This is, we're going to use real 3D lighting and effects and all that stuff with our 2D assets, and we're going to take a look at how and, and why and all that cool stuff right now. So uh, let me hop back over to the project here. <clears throat> And so this is where we left off again. You know, Robbie runs around and does all that stuff. And so that I'm not looking at this camera frustum uh, all the time, I'm actually just going to go ahead and just condense down uh, those components so I don't see it anymore. And this is our scene. It's got some parallaxing. It's pretty cool, but it's kind of flat. It's super green, you know, and it just, you know, it's these bold colors. And it, it, just, it just looks okay. So let's, let's take it up a notch. So in my, my project view here, I have this folder called props, all right? And props has got a bunch of stuff I can use in my level. And what I'm interested in is wall torch. So I'm going to bring this wall torch prefab into my scene. Now, we didn't really talk about this concept of prefabs before. And I know most of you have used UD, but for those of you who are relatively new, prefab just stands for prefabricated object. It's just an object that I've already set up that's just got a few things already done that you've already seen how to do. So I'm not using prefabs to say like, you know, not let you do some cool stuff. I'm just cutting out some stuff that's either really time consuming or stuff, stuff that you already know how to do that you wouldn't really learn. And so let's take a look at this, this wall torch. So first off, this wall torch has a sprite renderer, just like how we dragged Robbie in the scene. We could have dragged this sprite in the scene. It does have a script on here. This is a purely cosmetic script. Feel free to check it out when you have a chance. Called Light Flicker. All it does is use a Perlin noise to, to modulate the intensity of some light source. All right? Completely cosmetic. And actually, on mobile, it removes itself due to efficiency. Because on mobile, you don't need it. Inside my wall torch, I've got a couple objects here. So I have two particle effects. Now, particle effects aren't something we've touched on. But they're also super time consuming to set up. So instead of setting up some particle effects, I've just provided them as this prefab. But we can still see what goes into them. So if I click on fire, we can see we've got some fire particles here. And if you were curious, you could just look at the inspector and see, like, OK, it's got some starting colors. It loops. Uh, and it has emission. So it's emi emitting 80 particles uh, per cycle and a little bit of rotation. And it's using like a texture sheet animation to render uh, sort of like a, a sprite sheet to get that that fiery look of animated particles. So that, that's what that is. And then we have this other one called sparks. Um, we can see just, just causing some little sparks there. One thing we'll want to start thinking about as we're working is, you know, this obviously right now we're all on uh, PCs or Macs. We're all on uh, laptops, uh, computer machines, right? This isn't mobile right now. But if I intend to build this to mobile later, I have to start making some hard decisions depending on what my target hardware is. Maybe I don't want those sparks particles. Maybe I need to reduce down the amount of particles or what the particles are doing for fire, right? Because if I have a bunch of these, that's a lot of particles in my scene. And that can really bog my system down, right? So, you know, if I'm keeping in mind this idea of, of porting to mobile, I'm going to start thinking, well, what things do I want to do for efficiency's sake? Right now, we're just going to add a whole bunch of stuff, you know, and when we go to build to mobile, we might be like, oh, this doesn't run so good, so maybe you have to remove some stuff. Uh, but those are things that we, we want to think about. Like, do these sparks add enough to the scene to be worth their cost? Yeah, maybe they do, maybe they don't. But one thing's for sure, this is a torch. Torches should give off light. Now, this doesn't have a light, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on my wall torch here, and I'm going to go down to light, and I'm going to select point light. So that adds a point light here, which doesn't really have an effect just yet, but, but it will. And I'm going to go over to this new point light object. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move it away from the wall a little bit. So you know, with Unity, with the coordinate system, if I'm looking at something, positive z is into my scene, and negative z is back towards me. So I'm going to move this 
back towards me so it can shine on the wall here. So I'm just going to move this to negative 0.8. And I'll see that it kind of makes the sprite look a little bit brighter, but you know, it has no effect on the rest of the scene here. I'm also going to increase its range. I want these lights to be pretty big, so I'll give it a range of 20. And for the color, I'm going to set its color to some, some value I like. I like to use this orange color. Obviously, when it's your turn, you'll do whatever color you want. But I use this FFB61A orange color, the color that was used in the actual game, and it works very well for torches. And now what I'm seeing here is that the, the wall sprite here is actually glowing orange. It's receiving that light. One more thing I'm going to do in this light before I move on to look at why is here I have this indirect multiplier. I'm just going to set that to zero. It's not necessary, but I have this message that says, hey, we're not using indirect anyway, so I'm just going to say, okay, well then, let's not have any indirect. It's really not completely necessary. I just don't like those little warnings, so I'm just going to set that to zero. Now, if I'm curious as to why this sprite is lit up, you know, because using a sprite render just like everything else, I'll notice that if I look down here for the material, this sprite render is using a material called wall torch. It's not using a, the default sprite material. Like if I were to click on Robbie and on the sprite render, I would see material, sprites default, unlit flat sprite material. Well, with uh, this torch, it's using this wall torch. And if I look at the material, I'm going to see that this material has a metallic map and a normal map. And because it's, it has a metallic map and a normal map, it is just a standard shader. It's not a custom shader or anything like that. It's not a specially made 2D shader. Or just a standard shader. Metallic map, normal map. It is a 3D object. And so, 3D object, normal map, you know, metallic map, receives light. Easy. So if I were to say, well, first off, with my wall torch selected, come up to my inspector and click apply because I want all of my torches to have a point light. So I want to do that. But if I were to then say go down to my level folder, which is where we found like our, uh, our level sprites and shadows and background, but here I have materials and I have a, a platforms material and I have a metallic map and a normal map. And you might be thinking, well, you know, the wall torch was easy because I have the diffuse and normal and specular, right? That all seems pretty straightforward. But with a tile map, I'm rendering pieces of diffuse and pieces of normal. How does that work? Well, if I look at the actual textures themselves, you will see that on the sprite, it's set up in such a way that we've got, you know, one, two, three, and four sprites. If I look at the texture and the normal map, you will see that it's set up to have one, two, three, and four. Unity automatically says, okay, you're using this part of this sprite sheet. These are the UV coordinates. Grab that part of the normal map. Grab that part of the emissive map or the metallic map or whatever. It lines it up automatically. So this just works with tile maps. I don't, it's no, no, no special deal there. And so what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go ahead and I'll just click on my platform. Uh, under my grid there, and for my material, I'm going to look at the tile map renderer where it says sprites default because this is a renderer, my tile map renderer. I'm going to drag my platforms onto there. All of a sudden, what do I get with my platforms? I get this. So now, as I move this around, I get light on my platforms, this orange light from the torch. Now remember earlier when I said that the shadow looks a little ridiculous right now because it's just black shadow? Well now, it just kind of looks like it fades to shadow. You can't tell that it's this weird sort of, you know, black blob over top of our platforms. As a matter of fact, without the shadow, our walls look kind of weird, right? And we get like light appearing where it shouldn't appear and stuff like that. So the shadow helps us uh, hide that stuff. All right, and so now I have one light. In the, in the next step here, I'm gonna add a whole bunch more lights and we're gonna do more stuff with this. But for now, we've got one light and that's where we wanna be. So. Oop, I don't want to move my whole shadow map, that's for sure. Um, okay, so I've got a light, and as I move it around, I see it lights things up. So you're going to start by going to the props folder, and you're going to drag the wall torch prefab into your scene there. And you can take a look at it there in your hierarchy or in your scene or wherever. And you're going to right-click on wall torch. You're going to go to light and then point light. That is going to add a point light here. And then on that point light, you're going to move it forward to negative 0 0.8. So just move it forward a little bit. Set its range to 20, set its color to orange or, or whatever you want. I'm using orange since it's a torch. Uh, and then I've just set its indirect multiplier to zero. On the wall torch object here in the hierarchy, I'm just going to click, you're going to click apply in the upper right hand corner to apply those prefab changes. And then finally, you are going to go to your assets level materials folder to locate the platforms material. 
and you can drag that onto the tile map renderer of your platform here, or you can simply just drag the material onto the platform game object. It'll apply it that way too. And then you will see lighting from your torch applied to your um, platforms, save your scene, and then we will do the rest of the lighting in the next step.